Well, hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV travel, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, relax, and let's talk about RVs. Hello everyone, this is Rob from RV Talk Radio. Welcome to episode 51. 51, we're just moving along there. Well, this has been quite a week, and boy, we've been getting nailed with monsoons. Stay tuned. The weather here in Arizona is kind of amazing in a way. Well, first of all, you know, it's summertime, and we've been complaining about how hot it has been. And, uh, yeah, it's been hot. It's been doing like 105, 10, 15, pushing 20 one day. But this is also known as what's called the monsoon season. So what those are is basically, and I'm not a weatherman or anything, but what happens when the weather gets just about right, they start getting a uh, southerly flow of moisture that comes from the Gulf and uh, makes it more humid. And then during the, and it usually seems to happen in the evenings, is kind of in certain areas and it seems to be consistently at the same places they develop is these storms come through and you wonder well, where in the moist where'd the moisture come from because it's like been a clear day all day anyway all of a sudden you'll start getting uh, you'll see flashes of lightning coming through and then you can in the distance you can see literally the clouds are just dumping moisture or rain wherever it may be and it's quite a sight it's it's you can literally see the water dumping out of the clouds and uh if you're <laughs> fortunate you're not under one of those but uh it's amazing to watch so that's where the big problems of uh the flooding and things like that come in is it's amazing when you're down here in in, in Arizona and you'll be driving down the road and you go over a bridge and you'll say a certain river or wash and there's never water in them. It's very rarely do you see water in the rivers. But what happens is up in the upper hills towards uh, uh, Flagstaff or Prescott or uh, Payson, places like that, these big rain dumps come along. And wherever they might hit, well, the, the rain is, is so intense that it's too much for the, um, the landscape to handle. And it just dumps and it comes in. And so you never know really what washes will suddenly out of nowhere fill up with water and that's why they say well you know you want to be careful and you certainly do not want to underestimate the power of flooding and uh, i was watching a show just the other day that it only takes about one foot of water that can start actually moving your vehicle uh, because you have air in your tires and things like that so it's amazing how many people challenge that and also in Arizona, they have a, what uh, I think they call stupid driver <laughs> law. If someone actually tries to go through these floods and they get trapped, and they will be charged for all the services is to rescue them. So, uh, yeah, they get kind of uh, like, come on, use common sense down here. But these monsoons are amazing. And last night, oh, my gosh, we had small monsoons for two days now, uh, three days. And the first two were those, you know, lots of show, um, light shows. And we did do some videos on that and had some fun with making videos out of them. But um, the third one was came and nailed us right over the top of us. And uh, some of us, you know, we're outside. I had a, um, a, la um, a Brino, Brino um, uh, time-lapse video going until holding out till it rained. And... Uh, I got some really good photography of it, but uh, so me and another gentleman was standing outside, and the storm's getting closer and closer. Pretty soon, that lightning is all over the place. I mean, it was behind us, above us, around us, in front of us. It was everywhere to a point that I was like, uh, this is getting to be real stupid standing out here. And as soon as I could start feeling the rain starting to hit, I ran and grabbed a camera. And I'm thinking, why am I running around here with lightning, holding on to a tripod made of metal? So that was my first thing going, boy, this is not so smart. But then just after that, um, you know, I got back to the RV just fine. 
dove in there and then uh the uh the wind just came out of nowhere um just blowing like crazy and the lightning i was i mean literally shaking and the thunder shaking the rvs and uh, even the uh, pets are going uh what's going on mom and dad and and of course um and I don't know what causes it, but uh, of course the power goes out, and that's not good in Arizona. So, what's that mean? That means no air conditioning. So even though these monsoons and rains are going through, it's still 90 degrees outside. So you know we're hanging in there, and we think you know brownouts don't last very long, and it's going for a while. And pretty soon it's like, all right, it's getting a little warm in here. So you could start seeing, uh, you know, the few friends of ours all around here are all trying to maneuver, trying to figure out how to compensate for no electricity. So like our one neighbor, that which we've told you about, are the uh, traveling nurses. He was gone and she was there, but she didn't know how to set up their, uh, their generator. They have a small generator. So he came home from work. I was outside trying to get our system working. I got a generator working and... Um, I could not get either one of my air conditioners to run without popping the circuit off the generator, which was very frustrating. So, of course, we've told you we have the third air conditioner. So we're trying different things to get that third air conditioner to work. So we thought, okay, if I can't uh, draw enough current from the generator without popping the circuit, I'll plug the <laughs> the uh, portable uh air conditioner into the inverter that we had and then we'll do it that way and I'll just run the generator to charge the batteries. Well, plug that into that. The inverter is only a 1,000 watt inverter. Pop that circuit. So it's like, great. I have no air conditioning. Finally, it's like, all right, I'll just put the portable into a regular wall outlet, run the generator and see if that can, uh, if our generator can sustain that. Voila, that worked. Um, and we do have a little monitor. It tells us how much amperage we're pulling. And it, we're in the green even with that on. So that was our savior. It took a little um, maneuvering and popping of circuits until I figured out what worked. So at least I know what to do next time. Um, remember I told you that we also took that uh, air conditioner and wired it directly to the pole separate of the entire 50 amp service in case we pop the 50 amp service breaker so we always have a backup cooling system going in here with the animals in here needless to say it was a very interesting evening because our neighbor he couldn't get any of his systems to work the other neighbor uh, the two uh, traveling nurses their generator is working but they're uh, they couldn't produce enough amperage to run their uh, system so they were frustrated so luckily the power came on about 45 minutes to an hour after it went off and so you know the panic was kind of over but it was going off and on all night long it was um like i said the monsoons are no big deal and you stay away from the washes and stuff and you be safe and careful but the big part is if you lose your power down here you're in a heap of trouble when it comes to cooling now we're not gonna croak. It would be it will be just plain old hot, which you know most countries don't have uh, air conditioning that often anyway. They live in just fine. Um, it's just not comfortable. But anyway, and now when it daytime when it's hot out and you don't have air conditioning, uh, these RVs can be like ovens. So anyway, you just got to do the best you can. But boy, uh, talk about getting your systems checked. And, and, and so the moral of the story is, no matter how many times I've talked about this stuff and, and keep thinking about how we're going to deal with it, uh, when it actually happens, you know, uh, I thought I'd have enough amperage out of my generator, the 5500, uh, to handle the uh, situation, and it, and it failed. So <laughs> anyway... But at least now we know and have a process. But I tell you, if you're out here and about and you have pets and stuff, do some trial runs and, and uh, pretend uh, that your power has gone out. Unplug yourself from the pole and figure out what are you going to do uh, to keep yourself cool during the time of brownouts and blackouts. So anyway, uh, I thought we'd share that little story with you and let's move on. So by the time you hear this show, 
Sherry and I would be back from San Diego. Yep. So, uh, you know, we've been kind of pursuing uh, looking at the uh, sailing world. And we told you folks that, you know, we did we got certified. Uh, you'll see the videos on that. It's already up. And so the question being is, is it's been fun to talk about and it's, you know, neat to see it all happening. But, you know, there is a lot of realism to it. But when you take the school, it's it's work, 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 work. And so you don't really know what's going on. So what we're going to do, and I think I've mentioned this on the show before, is we're going to San Diego on uh, Friday. And uh, like I said, this has already happened by the time the show comes out on Monday. We, uh, and that's, I have to do the show a little bit earlier than I normally do, so my timing's a little weird here. But uh, then on Saturday, we're going on a four-hour tour. <laughs> Sounds like the uh, Gilligan's Island uh, on a cruise um, sail- sailboat, uh, which supplies a lunch and has a drinks and whole works and it's four hours and also it's goes out of the bay and uh, out to uh, a little wildlife viewing but what we want to do is just enjoy a day of sailing to see it uh for what it is and so um the other little hint is is uh that on saturday we're actually uh not that we're shopping we might be anyway we are going to be looking at an our um a sailboat of that we're kind of interested in and but you know there'll probably be many to look at as we go just scoping it out nothing's rock solid yet we're just kind of looking at what ifs we did this and what if we do a combination sail rv thing uh we could have a, you know some very interesting stories coordinating things with the rv and the sailboat anyway that's kind of what we're thinking that's thinking out loud that could change a little bit uh, we do know one of our uh, other, uh, uh, some of our listeners uh, uh, that we talked about before are going to be over in San Diego too. Uh, we're hoping that we catch up with them. But we have a pretty busy schedule. So we'll see how it goes. But it's also a vacation. So Sherry and I are going to be right on the bay of um, uh, of San Diego, right at the marina, at the Shelton. It's not cheap. It's a nice place. And so I've never actually paid that much for a motel room for two nights. And a little bit of a shocker for what I'm used to paying. And we're just going to enjoy ourselves and have some fun. And we've never been to San Diego. And uh, so we're kind of excited. And uh, we'll we'll be videotaping everything we can. And um, we'll have an actual show video coming up that... um, we hope that you'll enjoy. It's uh, not like the normal videos we've been doing. We're kind of changing our format a little bit. The other thing you'll notice is we're doing a lot of videos, uh, little uh, tidbits of uh, time lapse, or we do things of just pretty things, and we we still love doing that stuff. And there's little short bits that you can put in, but there is actual now a storyline that we're putting together that um, for the new uh, outdoor travel channel. And I hope you enjoy it. And when you see those shows, uh, they'll make a lot more sense of, uh, uh, while we still have the little shows in between the big shows. So we'll see how that goes. I think I also told you that uh, uh, Cinder, we've been checking out her uh, new doggy, prestigious uh, doggy palace place she's staying uh, I mean, they, they even offer massages and stuff. So Cinder's got this great place she's going. It's I got playtime and a big room, and and she gets peanut butter and a Kong thing. She's going to be spoiled um, pretty bad, I'm hoping. And because the last time I took her to a kennel thing, she was a little shook up. So this one's kind of special. So I thought this time we're going to spend some money on something really nice for her. Because uh, this is just not a, a a trip that she can go on. Now the kitty, she's going to just stay in the RV. It's only for two and a half days. We do have our neighbors that know how to get into our rig. We do have an RV lock system, which we do. You know, if you ever want to get one, we have the discount um, on our site at RV Travel Buddy. Just go to product review, and you can get a very significant discount on buying one. And the RV lock's so nice because if you want to give it to a neighbor. They could check on our RV and make sure our cat's okay, So, especially if the power goes out. So anyway, that's our trip coming up. Uh, looking forward to it. Look for some great videos coming out of that. And I'm sure we're going to have some interesting stories for you in the next 
episode, so stay tuned. So we, uh, we actually did something that was kind of exciting for another channel, and it has to do with a, a sail, uh, sailing uh, channel, and the, the channel is called Accidental uh, Sailor Girl. And they are uh, over in Florida, and they live in a sailboat, and they've been kind of fun to watch. They're just like uh, RVers. And uh, what's kind of different about them is they're into bluegrass. And so they actually uh, uh, sing or do so while they, anyway, the short, make the story short, is they produced their own album um, and they actually recorded it in their boat because uh, they live in their boat. So anyway, their uh, this album is called um, For Sale, which is F-O-R, <coughs> excuse me, Um S A I L for sale, and so they produced the whole album. Well, you guys know we have outdoor travel radio, so I thought, wouldn't that be cool that we add a new section in that show where new artists can submit music to us and we'll uh, play it at certain times? So we got their music, they sent it to us, we're excited about it. We loaded it into the uh, radio station and it plays at 6 6 a.m., 12 a.m., 6 p.m., and 12 p.m., um, four times a day on weekdays, and I think we did all, all seven days. Anyway, so um, we'll play one track of the music uh, at those certain times, just kind of introducing a new sound, and this particular group is a bluegrass, so it was really fun. I, I really appreciate bluegrass. I actually play bluegrass a little bit. Um, during my, uh, my playing guitar days, <laughs> I wish I had my guitar with me. And so, uh, anyway, so if you get a chance to go to Outdoor Travel Radio, uh, besides that show, we also have the old time storytelling shows of uh, uh, Gunsmoke and uh, Sherlock Holmes, which is at 7 uh, p.m., and this is all Pacific time. Uh, so if you ever get a chance to listen to that, if you like old-time radio shows, that's on there too. So that was kind of exciting. It was really fun to be able to help another channel out, uh, especially in a different kind of way that we've ever done before. And these shows, the show you're listening to right now, get loaded onto Outdoor Travel Radio. And you can listen to that on your cell phone too. You can just go to OutdoorTravelRadio.com on your cell phone hit the little link that says mobile app and it uh, downloads a little app right on your phone and so you just press the little app go straight to the radio station and it plays really 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 good music um, we have all forms of music uh, from easy listening to a lot of classical rock and a little bit of pop and then at nighttime we kinda chill it down a little bit to just easy listening and uh, so and a little bit and just a touch of class classic rock at nighttime so if you're leaving it on to sleep with it should be calming so um you don't want it too perky or if you like me and listen to a perky <laughs> radio station i i'm going to sleep with tapping my foot and it's like all right stop that and so anyway it's a really good sh uh, music we're uh, always streamlining it we urge you to take the chance to get a chance go to that radio station try it out it's cool we got a pure 100 percent music license to play all the music that you like and we have dug and dug and dug and uh, the, grabbed the music that all of us just grew up with that we like and I, I think you'll enjoy it so it's designed to be music that you can take traveling with you on your rv uh, you can take it on your boat you can take it on your rv you can take it hiking you can play it anywhere anywhere in the world as long as you can connect to the internet with your cell phone and you can play it on your PC if you want to. Just go to OutdoorTravelRadio.com and press the little button there. And you're set to go. And you can get it loaded right onto your favorite um, music player. So there's more information for you. I'm really happy we were able to help out Accidental Sailor Girl. You get a chance to see their channel. Go visit them. She's, uh, they're a real cute couple to watch. So today has been one of those check things, fix things, do things day. And so after the monsoon we had, you know, uh, 
couple of things went amok. Like we got this vent going out the window for the air conditioner. That thing's, I just don't have that connected very well. I finally went out there and said, okay, I need something to kind of hold this in place. Ran to the store, got some little seed clamps, put that in, then re resealed it with just a temporary tape because I will be taking it off eventually. Anyway, so finally got that fixed. And of course, with all the stuff going on, uh, and the reason I'm bringing this up is, you know, maybe you need to go check a few things. And uh, when's the last time you checked, like, the oil in your generator? So I went out, checked our oil. It's actually down a little bit, but it's fine. Um, the other thing is checking the uh, levels of your batteries. Uh, if you're charging a lot and stuff and, uh, in this hot weather here in Arizona, and I'm sure you got warm weather in some of the other states, good thing to go check the levels of your um, cells in your batteries make sure you use distilled water if you're going to refill them uh it's just been one of those days of fixing things uh, my truck which has a billion running lights on it, it had some bulbs go out this hot weather i swear is affected anything that's defaulty <laughs> is gonna break especially light bulbs and things like that and it wasn't even like a week that or two that i actually got the truck down here that I had to replace my batteries because they're old batteries. But boy, once you get in this hot weather, they will suck them dry. So if you got bad batteries, you will end up replacing your batteries really quick down here. So what I'm suggesting is, when's the last time you've checked like the uh, the f fluids and all your different uh, items? And, and of course, I'm checking my tanks all the time. Uh, this hot weather is brutal, but um, some of you guys are dealing with the hot weather too. And if you're in humidity, that means you're going to be dealing with moisture. you got those humidifiers running, I assume. Make sure you're emptying out the tanks. Make sure they're working properly. Uh, but also, you know, check your uh, fluids, check your generator, check all that stuff. Um, me, I had to also figure out how to switch all my... You know, I told you I was blowing circuit breakers like crazy. Blew one on the generator, figure out how to do that. Uh, I have a special... Um, a uh, fuse I had put in for the inverter in case we pulled too much amperage out of it. It worked perfect, of course, but I had to figure out where the guy, I had the guy put it and found that. So it was a lot of things today. It was kind of fix things day. So uh, anyway, maybe you might want to give yourself a fix things day and go around checking things and make sure everything's in order. Maybe even check your tire pressures and stuff like that. And if you're in hot weather, is your tires protected from the sunlight? And, uh, boy, it's, I, I, it's going to be a tough year on the RV here. Uh, luckily, I don't, our RV is white. That kind of helps reflective. But uh, there's going to be, uh, like, all the plastic moldings and stuff get kind of discolored. There is a little chemical to get them all white again and stuff. And I'm not even going to bother with it till the summer's over. So, you, and the other thing I always hear about is why are you guys down there in the summer? And we, we've explained that to a lot of folks. But uh, the only thing I can say is, yeah, we're in the winter time right now. So we only have two more months of this really hot weather. Then you got to be jealous of us pretty soon because we're going to have like nine months of summer. And so September's come along and you can start feeling the hints of fall coming, which is pretty. I agree. And But then that cold air comes. And in some of the areas like where I came from, it starts to rain and get cloudy and other places just starting to get threats of snow and things like that. And then uh, you're going to say, oh, gosh, I wish I was down where Rob was. So, you know, we're just waiting it out. Just like if you lived up in Alaska or something, you kind of hunker down during the winter time, And just that's just how it is. Well, this is our winter time, and we're dealing with it. But, um, you know, we're doing things to help keep cool. And so, you know, here in Arizona... In the summer, this is the time to uh, go to movies and go to uh, indoor events and uh, go swimming at nighttime and all that kind of stuff. You know, yeah, this is where this word siesta comes from, from Mexico, is uh, it is just too hot to work. So life goes on around here at, in the evening and the mornings. Um, in the mornings, people are out and about doing their things, taking their animals for walks and stuff. Same thing about... Now it's about 8 o'clock or so. It gets later and later. Suddenly people pop out of their RVs. They're outside talking, walking their dogs. Um, he's like, where were these people? And everybody just kind of goes into hiding during the afternoons and 
now I kind of understand that siesta kind of, uh, you know, just no work gets done during, it's just too hot. And uh, every time I do a project during mid-afternoon, I come out and I'm just drenched. It's so hot. Anyway, but that's just how it is. Thought I'd kind of remind you, but boy, guys, take the time. I know it's summertime. We're all having a good time, but check your equipment and check those little things that you've been kind of putting off. This is the time to check your liquids, check your full tanks, and check your everything. So, and then... Uh, it's nice to be preventive so it doesn't ruin your summer. So go for it, guys. So I wanted to take the time that I haven't done in a couple of shows to remind you that we'd love to have you contact us, especially if you have questions or things you'd like us to talk about. I also need to remind you that, you know, uh, as we're going along here, we have some big adventures coming up and we're going to make some bigger sacrifices than normal. So if uh, you... Uh, fill up to it uh you know uh, we have you know our stickers and things like that that we have up for sale we'd love to uh, get donations for stickers uh, if you look down our, our uh, description you'll see a link to our stickers all the time and uh don't forget you can also uh, give us a tip if you like the shows we're doing and all the things we're doing and now we have our new patron account uh set up for the big show which is coming up pretty soon of what we're going to be doing which uh, is going to be quite cost intensive and we're going to need help from our patrons to actually do what we're going to do in the future and that's about all I can kind of I'm starting to reveal what it is a little bit but anyway so uh, the big thing is we'd love to hear from you and if there's anything you can do to uh, help with the program we appreciate it um, everything goes to the right causes. Everything is done legitimately and recorded properly. So we're uh, there's nothing under the table around here. But uh, uh, we could always use help from our supporters, and we certainly do appreciate it. And as time goes on, the more that we will need that support. So anyway, if you uh, like to trade out some of that kind of stuff for us, stickers and things like that and, and especially on Patreon we have uh, some special packages there where we uh, spo we make sure and spoil people that uh, help us there and we actually will be when we start getting folks on there which is brand new uh, we'll start doing some special videos that only our patron folks can see and some of the behind the scenes of some of the things that go on here that we don't usually put in our videos so, uh, yeah, those people will be treated pretty darn well, and we'll make sure that uh, we just, the word is grateful over here all the time. And once again, just want to remind you, don't hesitate to uh, contact us and, and send us your questions and things, and we love your comments, and we love to hear what we're doing right. We love to hear that too. Sometimes we get rid of something that, we didn't know everybody liked so well and things like that. So we do appreciate that. And, of course, we've loved the growth we've seen on RV Talk Radio. And uh, we'll keep this show going for a long time. It'll blend with other things that we're doing. But RV Talk Radio looks like it's got a long history. And it's, um, so far, it's a great history. And so it's got a, a, long, a big future ahead of it as it keeps going. We just keep seeing it grow, and we really appreciate that. And and you guys have been just wonderful. And so um, <laughs> thanks, guys. We appreciate it. Anyway, let's move on to something new. Now, for this part of the show, I want to talk about the 10 most used things that Sherry and I use on our RV. And... Uh, some of these might be obvious, and you may actually be a new RVer, and you're wondering what are the things you might want to have. So these are the things that I see, see us use constantly, and I'm just there's just 10 right now. There could be more, but uh, for the sake of the show not being too long, <laughs> we'll go with our top 10 here. So the first thing is I've been using over and over, and I've had this for years, is a telescopic ladder. Now, I noticed I was at Camping World, and, and they're not cheap. I actually got mine for like $79 back in the day, 2006. But uh, now they're like $170 or something. But they're quite expensive. But the one thing I do miss, um, the telescopic ladder works great. I can get on the roof with it, and it comes in very handy. 
I would, it would be nicer to have like a 10, 15, 14 foot, uh, uh, I don't know what you call a, uh, side ladders, a step ladder type where you could come up in the side of your rigs. Cause I don't like the fact of taking a telescopic ladder and leaning against the slide and putting so much pressure against the edges, but, um, but it still, it works just fine. And if you need to get up on the roof and work on your slides or anything, uh, the telescopic ladder will work. And, uh, it's been a good investment for us. <laughs> the other thing is we use all the time is tapes, all kinds of tapes. Get yourself a 10 pack of electrical tape. I swear to you, you will use that to death. And I'm going to, I'm actually going to add to that, um, Velcro, Velcro, either sticky sided Velcro, or you can get Velcro where it's got the two different kind of connectors on both sides of it. So you can just wrap it in a circle. Both of those kinds of Velcros are important, but tape wise, make sure you got some good Gorilla tape, duct tape, electrical tape. We use that stuff all the time, constantly. Even when we had our tire blowout, that that Gorilla tape was a lifesaver. So anyway, um, it held our <laughs> our panel together pretty well until we were able to get it repaired. Um, the other thing we use all the time, number three, is a barbecue. Um, I know it's all kinds of shapes and sizes out there. We, um, gosh, I can't remember what brand we use, but I did do a show about it. And uh, But get yourself a good portable, uh, and don't be cheap. Get it. I know you can get one like 20 bucks, 25 bucks now where you assemble them and their little thing. But spend the money, spend 100, 150 bucks for a really good one. Uh, you won't regret it. So uh, we really like ours. Ours is built like a Sherman tank. It's portable, it's small, and all you have to do is put it on the table, and you can get a special table for it if you want. But got to have a barbecue, guys. Uh, the next thing that we've used a lot that we didn't think we'd use a lot, and it was uh, a little bit expensive, was a air compressor. Now, we got uh, a Viair air compressor. I believe it's around $79. We've done a video about that, too. Uh, anyway, those have come in real handy. Well, that has come in handy for uh, emergencies and uh, checking uh, and for our bicycles. And for checking to make sure that all the tires are at a, um, at the right pressure that they're supposed to be at. So we have new tires now, so not an issue right now. But uh, it's amazing. It's like I didn't think we'd use that air compressor that much. And I thought, wow, you know, I mean, I get my money back on this one. But it's been worth every penny having a good, not a cheap one. Don't get one of those little cheap plastic ones. Spend a little money and get a good one. Viair is the one we use, and we're very happy with it. The fifth thing here is uh, carrying spare water. Not like drinking water, but spare water for cinder. <laughs> if you have pets, we keep a gallon of water in the truck all the time. Even if it's warm, I know, that, uh, but if a dog needs water and, and you, don't, you don't trust the water around you or the lakes that they're at and stuff like that, um, always have water and so we've used it over and over again we always keep a gallon of water in the truck all the time and uh, whenever especially when we have cinder and and not to mention it comes in handy when you get a little dirty you need to rinse your hands off things like that but always keep a gallon of, of water it costs like 89 cents for a gallon keep it in your car or in your truck um, nearby uh, just because you know you're going to need it now if you got a motorhome then you know you that's not as big an issue but when you're pulling a, a trailer or a fifth wheel uh having something to rinse your hands off real quick left just grab your little gallon rinse pour it off the back of the truck rinse your hands off or have water to give to your animals is very important and we've used it over and over again the next item which uh, i knew i'd probably use a lot and i'm glad i did um is uh our magellan gps uh in the truck uh, that's a must-have. It's, uh, but uh, we also we've told you that we also use our cell phones a lot, and Shuri uses both. And so, but it's been a great tool. We've been happy with it. We bought ours from uh, Camping World. We got the one with the good Sam directory in it, and uh, it's been and we have used that directory a couple of times. So 
it was worth the little bit of extra money to have that directory, uh, a good SAM directory. So uh, get yourself a good GPS for your vehicle. The next thing that was uh, working really good is making sure you have lots of charging stations in your RV and your truck. Uh, I underestimated this when we first started full timing and you know charging your phones and, and if you're doing filming and stuff like us we're constantly um, charging up batteries for our, our standard cameras our video cameras uh, Sherry's uh, uh, Amazon book uh, uh, I can't remember the name of it um, anyway so she's got that plus we have a tablet and so and we're charging batteries all the time so make sure you have all the converters you need for either your truck plug-in cigarette lighters um, USBs whatever it is but think it through and make sure you because you, sometimes you'll have like five items all at once that you have to charge can you do that or do you have to wait one at a time uh, if you want so think it through gets lots of charging systems at different ways of doing it whether it's in your RV or in your vehicle we actually have this converter in our truck that has several plugins in it so we can actually charge more than one item in the truck while we're driving um, to keep up uh, her tablet to keep up her our cell phones and also keep the um, Magellan fired up so yeah it's uh, it's we found that to be something we constantly have to address over and over again. Now my next one here is uh, number eight is is more of a pleasure type of thing but bird feeders. <laughs> so our biggest pleasure right now and we've done some videos on it is uh, uh, the hummingbirds and we have special little feeders with suction cups off the window which uh, entertain our cat very well too but we really enjoy all the hummingbirds that we're getting at the RV and in a lot of other places, especially in the Northwest, we have another regular seed bird feeder that we'll set out on a tree or somewhere uh, where we can see it from the window to see the different kind of birds in the area. So anyway, uh, uh, it's another item that we use over and over again all the time is bird feeders and hummingbird feeders. So that's something you might want to put on your list. The next thing is, and, and this one's not as much fun, but having a septic flush kit uh, where you can back flush your uh, your tanks. I uh, didn't think I'd use that much, but uh, sometimes, you know, you guys have, probably just like me, most RVs have a place to put a black hose, we call it the black hose, to uh, pump water into the septic as you drain, fill it up and drain it out. But that doesn't always work so well. There's a device out there that you can put on there that allows you to do back flushing where you can pump water from the septic hose up into the tank and blow water that way, which is really good for getting out clogs and buildups and things like that. And um, I'd be amazed. I could think I've got my black tank all fr uh, rinsed out really well, and all of a sudden I'll put that back flush on there, and it's amazing how much more stuff comes out. So, And back flushing your gray tanks, too. You get food particles and things like that, and uh, they can get kind of nasty. So... Uh, a septic back, back flush kit has been something we've used over and over again. And last but not least is, believe it or not, I know they're cheap and they break really easy, is those scrunchy hoses. And those are the coolest hoses you could ever buy. And if you break them and they start leaking or whatever, they're only like 14 bucks, and you probably get them cheaper on sale at Walmart. And you've seen them on TV, they're little scrunchy hoses. Um, and they come in, uh, I think, tw uh, Mars is 50 feet, and it's so easy to, to use and store and put away, and you could, uh, you know, if you want to rinse off a car, fill. Uh, we use it to fill up Cinder's swimming pool. What a great tool. Uh, and, yes, they're cheap, and they do leak, and they do break. And then, um, so I, I, every time I'll bring that up, somebody say, well, mine leaked all the time. Well, yeah, they're cheap, but you know what? They're awfully convenient and they work really good for RVs and uh, they'd work good on boats too and they don't take up very much room instead of those old plastic ones that you reel up and stuff that's what we use for our black hose for our septic is our big 50 foot scrunchy hose 
and we also use that same hose to rinse things off and uh, but we don't use it for fresh water tanks or anything like that uh, but boy just having a hose that's so readily available and so easy to put away in store scrunchy hoses I, I know there's probably another name for them but you can't miss them they, they scrunch up into a little ball uh, they're just awesome so I highly recommend that you get one or two of those keep them around so that's my list of 10 things that we constantly use over and over again well, since I seem to be on such a roll about products and things I thought I'd bring up another favorite item that's just not necessarily an RV item but it's a camera and I actually have two of them and I've talked about this camera before and they're made by Brino B-I-N-N-O I believe I'm saying it right and I've been using their cameras for quite a while now and they specialize in time lapse and and I have GoPros too and I know you guys you can get your GoPro and you can do time lapse that way but these Brainos are amazing they are very easy to use <coughs> they have settings built into them to compensate for light especially when it comes to stars and moon and then going into the daytime um, the camera compensates for all of it and it's totally amazing what kind and you never know when you do a time lapse until you actually look at it whether you captured something cool or not sometimes you put that thing out and you think all right this is gonna be really cool and it's a eh, or uh, uh, you know anyway it's it's just a fun fun camera and they got two models now they got what's called the TLC 200 is we have that one and it's a bigger unit and it has a we do have a waterproof case for it and you can uh, uh, set it up almost anywhere once you put that case on there and we were several times to put it on a tripod and run it all night long and then we have another little piece of equipment called a panning device which mounts on the bottom of it which you can program with your phone uh, through Bluetooth you can program it to rotate while it's doing its time lapse so that's if you look at some of our time lapse you'll see we'll, you'll, we'll actually put in the description of this panning um, and then they got this new TLC 120 which is brand new it's a really small unit and it's weatherproof my understanding and it has um, a built-in internet which you can control it through your cell phone so you don't operate it from the box you actually operate it through your cell phone through internet it has a little Wi-Fi system in it and in the big brain oh, I think we operate by Bluetooth so anyway really fun little cameras if you really want something fun it's but you gotta remember it's really designed for it's time-lapse only and but they can do amazing time-lapse and if you really enjoy time-lapse and I do uh, I, I wish I could take it in some really interesting places but between the time-lapse and our 360 cameras they're fun they're different no it's not always part of our story when we put them out uh, in our channel they're just for enjoyment and so some of them you'll do you just flip you know just go nuts over and saying wow that was really cool and other ones you go eh but we try not to make them too long but they're just for enjoyment so we tend to play those or, or um, have them available late in the week um, so it's um, not unusual for us to uh, post those videos on like Thursday Friday or Saturdays sometimes even Sundays if we have a lot of them and we keep our primary subjects um, Mondays is always RV talk radio so Tuesday Wednesday or Thursdays when we have our storyline for Robin Sherry stuff but later in the week you never know what we're gonna put out um, sometimes they're just enjoyable videos and so we're we just like to do that kind of stuff and I know that we're not but when I look at all the other channels and I love them all but to me I just to I keep seeing like uh it's the same thing another kind of uh, uh, explanation of the same thing and I'm going guys I I just want to show you some of the pretty stuff out here and that's what my RV represents to me is where does your RV take you so anyway 
<laughs> That's why we do them. And yeah, it might confuse you a little bit on our channel. But if you enjoy time lapse and 360 videos, we'll always have them available to you. And, and, and our followers eventually figure it out. So there you go. Well, we're getting close to the end of our show, and I want to definitely thank you for listening this week. We're up to episode 51, grateful for all of our listeners and how we've been growing, and so keep it up, I guess, and also don't forget to uh, say hello. Go to our website, go to our contact page, and give us a holler. You can also uh, email me directly at rob at rvtalkradio.com. I also would want to remind our new listeners that uh, if you're just listening to us through like a video cop copy through YouTube, please remember that on your cell phone, you can download a couple of apps now, but we use uh, uh, Podcast Addict and it's a free uh, software that you can download and you can go to the search section, type in RV Talk Radio and it pulls our show right up and and then it's also the opportunity to visit other great podcasts out there, not just in RVing, but other subjects or hobbies that you may have. So give it a try. Um, if you can't find the link, you can go directly to rvtalkradio.com. And off to the left-hand side, there's a link right there that you can press that will connect you to Podcast Addict. It's absolutely free. And you can put it on your cell phone and you can turn your cell phone into a radio show. What's great about podcasts is you can listen to the show throughout the week. That's why they're hour long. You don't have to listen to it all at one time. So we hope you enjoy the features. We hope you enjoy the show. And please, once again, we love your feedback. One more reminder that you can listen to a lot of our episodes in the newest episodes on Outdoor Travel Radio, which is a full-time radio show. It plays RV Talk Radio three times a day at different times during the day. And uh, it has great music and great information. And it's just a fun radio show. And so, yep, it's part of this whole big scene. So check it out. So from me and Shuri, we wish you a great week. And we wish everybody to be safe. And don't let this wonderful summer get away from you. Bye now. Mm -hmm.